Hi guys, welcome to the video. Today I'm going to talk about the power of positive thinking is Satanism. This is something that I think a lot of people don't notice because it's, it's sold as an angel of light. And as you know, the Bible says the devil comes as an angel of light. Make sure you guys hit the like button and drop a comment in the comment section and subscribe if you're not subscribed. And before I get into the main topic, I just want to say all glory, honor, and praise to my Father in heaven and to my Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of kings and Lord of lords. So, why is the power of positive thinking Satanism? I'll start by telling you guys why I came up with this idea. or What made this idea come to my mind? I'm in a group chat. And in the group chat, one of the members of the group chat had posted a book. He said, guys, you guys should read this book. I think it was the audio version of the book. It was a book called The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent. And so I, I, I've already had these ideas about the whole positive thinking movement. As you know, guys, I was once a, a, a teacher of new age ideas, a teacher of self-help ideas, right? I used to promote this book heavily called Working With The Law. And I used to promote how this book allowed me to reach the success that I had reached, how I had read the book hundreds of times and I was studying this book and, and said I was going to study this one book and get everything from it and become successful. And I studied this book and practiced some of the things that it taught and I became, I, had, I, I developed a decent level of success. So not only, I, I'm, I just say that to lay the foundation of, yeah, not only do I understand the whole positive thinking thing, I have also used positive thinking. I have used manifestation. I have used the law of attraction to make six figures, to travel the world and, 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 and stuff like that, right? Well, to, to travel. I haven't traveled the whole world, but I, to travel. Nevertheless, so I'm in the group chat and the guy posted this book. And so I look into the author a little bit and I see that the author is a Christian. It's a Christian group chat that I'm in. And I'm like, I don't understand how somebody might could see that this guy's a Christian and, and think that, okay, but upon further investigation, uh, this, I, get, I believe this book, whenever it was written, one thing that we have to realize about, about some authors is that the United States for a while was, was supposed to be a Christian nation. Of course, I know things have took a turn. And so any author that wants to gain some kind of traction, especially at that time, 30, 40, 50 years ago, any author that wants to gain some traction, he's going to need to mix some Bible, some preacher, some pastor into his message because that's what people, hearts are mostly set on. It's a Christian nation. It's conservative. That's where the, the hearts of people were set. So if you want to gain some traction, you're going to have to sprinkle a little Christianity on there. As again, the Bible says the devil comes as an angel of light. So you have to come as a pastor if you're going to reach the people. You can't just come in an orange robe with a, with a dashiki on, your, on or, or, or uh, a, a turban on your head and think people are going to listen to you. They're going to be like, ah, oh, this guy. You may get some people to listen to you, but they're going to be like, ah, oh, this guy, this is some hippie other stuff. If you really want to get people's attention, you have to kind of come with some Bible. And that's one of the things that, I, that got me hooked on that book, Working with the Law, because he mixed the Bible all throughout it. He used the Bible to justify everything that he was saying. Of course, out of context. So anyway, this guy posts this book and I respond to him and I say, um, peace and love, brothers. We have to be careful with material like this. Christians don't rely on positive thinking to alter our circumstances. But by, a God, by, by abiding in Jesus Christ and being in God's word, our minds are renewed. Right? As you know, the Bible says, let the mind that is in Jesus Christ be in you. That we renew our minds, right? We take on the mind of Christ and not our own positive mind. We don't alter our circumstances with thought, but we submit ourselves to God's will, acknowledging that his thoughts are not our thoughts and that his will for us could be the opposite of what we are thinking. So we wouldn't attempt thought in our own will to circumvent the will of God, but rather we submit and, and keep faith upon seeking God's will. So here's, I'm, I'm, here's the point, one of the points, I'm gonna keep reading is that, yeah, this is real. Let's be clear, the law of attraction is real. The law of cause and effect, these things are real. And you can utilize them to manifest your own reality if you choose to, right? That's one of the tenets of Satanism, right? One of the tenets of the practice of Satanism is do what thou wilt. Do whatever you wanna do. Be your own God. Manifest your own reality. And you can do it. We have been equipped with the power to do it. We have been equipped with the power to use affirmations and to speak things into existence. You have been given that ability. 
and you can utilize that ability to go as far as you want to in this life and you can do it and be successful. But then what happens at the end of this life? Jesus says, many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, didn't I do this? Didn't I do that? Didn't I do this? And he'll say, depart from me. I never knew you, right? Only those who do the will of his father are going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Not those who do what they will, not those who use the power of, of positive thinking and manifest the reality. So what some people probably think when I say, oh, positive thinking is Satanism, they think that, I mean, that I'm saying it doesn't work. I know it works. That's why I'm saying I used it to, to enjoy, to live the, some of the life that I lived. I was using these principles to succeed, right? So I, I acknowledge that they are real, right? But, but we have to realize this is low-level witchcraft, right? Casting spells with your mouth, speaking affirmations with your mouth. People call themselves alchemists. Now, the, the new word for alchemist, the new, the new word for a wizard is an alchemist. The new word for a witch is a healer, right? <laughs> the, the new word for paganism, the new word for, for, for these pagan gods that you'll see in the Bible, Molech and Baal, the new words for these is the universe, in a, in a time of old, they, they, they had names for, their, for, these, for these, these, these deities that they served. But now they just call all these deities the universe. It's the universe. The universe is going to give me what I need. If I just do this, if I write these things down with a number two pencil, then the universe will give it to me. So the universe is a, is a cover word. It's, it's, it's Voltron. It's the Voltron of all the old gods mixed together into one Voltron god called the universe. And that god just has no will for you. That God just wants you to do whatever you want to do, to find your own purpose. So I'm here to say today, you are not here to find your own purpose. You are here to seek what God's will is for your life. That may be something grand and extravagant. It may be something not grand and extravagant. But in finding God's will for your life, you will enter and reap eternal life and following Jesus Christ, carrying your cross and following him, enduring to the end, and seeking God's will for you, that's when you will enter the kingdom of heaven. Or you can be a Satanist. You can be your own God. You can manifest your own reality, and you can do it successfully. That's what these teachers are doing. The Tony Robbins and, the, and these, these self-help life coach gurus, upon whom I was one of them, I would give people affirmations. I would say, man, if you want to make money, just say this affirmation every day and you will make money. And they would say the affirmation and they would start getting money. It works. It was a, it was a word spell, right? And I repent in the name of Jesus Christ of these things, right? It was a word spell and it worked. So the self-help book is a billion dollar business because it actually works, there are many, I had many testimonials of people saying how I changed their life with some of these teachings and how they're succeeding now and they're success, all of these things because it works. But is that God's will for you or is that your will for you? Because Satanism is do what thou wilt. Satanism is your will. It's whatever you want to do, you do it. Whatever you want to manifest, you manifest it. Here's all you got to do. If you think the right thoughts with the law of attraction, emotionally charged, mixing it with your vibrations and combining thought with emotion and feeling, that will produce the, 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 the energy and the vibration in the universe to quickly draw to you that which you are thinking about. And yes, it will. But will you be drawn to yourself, other deities, other spirits and other gods that bring it to you? Because when you want these things, when you desire these things, something's going to bring it to you. It ain't just going to come out of nowhere. No, something's going to deliver it to you. Now, when that thing delivers it to you, what does that thing want in exchange? So this is a spiritual thing that's happening. This isn't a conversation that you're having, right? Usually when people get into certain industries, when they get to a certain level, they do have the direct head-on conversation with that which they've been serving the whole time. But spiritually, there's something happening here. It's like, all right, I want to attract this, this money, this wealth. I want to attract this thing. Okay, Something's going to bring it to you. But who's bringing it? And now that they've brought it to you, what do they want from you? Oh, you wanted all this money. Okay, here's the money. But I need, I need you to engage in lust. So what I'm going to need in exchange for the money that I just brought you is you to develop this lust habit I have for you so that you can serve me with lust. Okay, I'm going to bring you this, this business you have, but I, I need someone to... Gamble. I, 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 yeah, here's, here's what you want, but, but 
I, I need somebody to have greed. I need you to serve this greed. I need you to develop this gambling problem because that's what I need in exchange for what I've just given you. So when you manifest your own reality, sure, you can do it, but understand that there's something delivering that to you and there's an exchange that's going to happen. And it, and it, it starts off, the exchange oftentimes starts off with you not knowing it. It's in the shadows, right? You don't even know it exists. You just think that you're succeeding. And in, in certain industries, you progress up the ladder to the point where you have the actual direct conversation now, where it's just like, hey, listen, if you want to go to the next level, here's, here's what's going to happen. But you were already groomed for that conversation because you have been serving that thing the whole time. You just didn't know it. But now it's time for a more steeper contract and covenant and conversation at this level. So by the time people have that conversation, they've already been groomed in spiritually because they've been serving that thing spiritually the whole time. So I go on to tell the guy in, 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 the, uh, in the text message, I say, um, the author of this book claims to be a Christian, but several reports suggest otherwise. So I found some quotes. I'm, you know, I'm not, a, I, I, they, these, these are quotes that it said that he said, so I'm going to read what they said. This author says, while Peel was a Christian, he believed that Jesus Christ wasn't the only pathway to God and that no religion had a monopoly on our ability to connect with God. Take this statement from Peel that was first published in his Plus, the magazine of positive thinking. Who is God? Some theological being? He is so much greater than theology. God is vitality. God is life. God is energy. As you breathe God in, as you visualize his energy, you will be re-energized. That's a, that's, that sounds like straight witchcraft. The whole God is energy thing. That's, that's the whole universe thing. Here's another one of the quotes. Or, or this thought he shared with the talk host Phil Donahue. He says, it is not necessary to be born again. You have your way to God, I have mine. I found eternal life. I found eternal peace in a Shrinto shrine. I've been to Shinto shrines and God is everywhere. Christ is one of the ways. God is everywhere, right? So you hear this is a guy that was portraying himself as a pastor who was more of a motivational speaker, self-help like guru, more of a wizard teaching wizardry, teaching witchcraft, masqueraded as an angel of light, right? Tre teaching witchcraft dressed up as self-help. And again, the, the, so the Bible says the devil comes as an angel of light. So, that, so, the, the, so witchcraft does not come to you in the beginning. I told you, you progress up the ladder. In the beginning, it just comes to you as here. Say these affirmations every day. Right? You ain't going to get into witchcraft for, until five years after that. But here, say these affirmations. Uh, visualize this. Put this vision board on your wall. Okay, now burn this candle. Now do this. Now, so you progress up the ladder of witchcraft, but in the beginning of witchcraft, it's, it's an angel of light. It is, it's so innocent that it's like, what's the big deal? Right? And if you're not rooted in the word of God, being led by the Holy Spirit, then who could not try it? Because it's, 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 it's what's the big deal? Me just saying some affirmations. Like, how, how, what's the big deal about that? How is, what's wrong with that? And, 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 and oftentimes, and, and, and when, you, when, you, when you're progressing up this ladder, the first stage isn't wrong. But the first stage is just to get you to the second and third stage, which is wrong. If you think about things like the Freemasons, in the first level of the Freemasons, it's probably so innocent that you don't know anything is wrong with it. But it is not until you progress up the ladder. But by the time you get to the higher degrees, you've already been so groomed by the lower degrees that the higher degrees aren't even a big deal to you anymore. If you were to see the highest degree, when you were at level one, you would probably be, you, you would, it would probably repulse you. But by the time you get to level, level two is just a little worse than level one. And level three, a little worse than level two. And it's not that much worse, it's just a gradual step forward. So by the time you get to level 30, level 31 and 32 and 33 ain't so bad. Because you've already progressed gradually up the ladder of, of defilement. And it's the same way with witchcraft. It's the same way with self-help books. Some of them start off very innocently, Right? But as you progress forward in these teachings and practices, you're inviting the things around you that want to take you captive into full-blown witchcraft. So the thing about the devil is he doesn't care if you ever know he exists as long as you serve him, right? And in and, and, and our faith, in Christianity to Jesus says, if you confess me before men, I will confess you before my Father in heaven. If you deny me before men, I will deny you. So we are called to have a public faith, we are called to be outward and open in the public with our faith, 
But when you're serving the, uh, the, the, the kingdom of darkness, it doesn't even matter if you deny it. You can be a full-blown devil worshiper and get on the stage and say, no, I don't, I don't worship the devil, I believe in God. And it doesn't matter. What does that tell you about it? That it doesn't even matter, right? But in our faith, if you deny our Lord, that, that is a grave sin to, to deny the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and if you do not confess him publicly, not just privately, this is not, I tell people, your faith ain't private, it ain't just something you just say in your room. You have to come outward and be public with your faith, confessing that Jesus Christ is Lord, not just privately. You have to profess and confess this publicly. So I end the message to say to the, to the guy in the, in the group chat, I say, um, we can't serve two masters, one master and Jesus Christ, not 80% Jesus and 20% self-help authors. I believe Jesus has provided us with all the self-help we need throughout scriptures. America is a Christian nation, especially during the time of the writing of this book. So any author wanting to get some traction at that time will have to sprinkle God and biblical concepts in their work. Much love to all. Remember when Jesus, when, when the devil came to tempt Jesus, right? The devil began to throw scripture at Jesus. Doesn't the Bible say that God will give his angels charge so your feet won't dash against a stone, throw yourself off this, off this high point? He came to, to Jesus with scripture. He, wanted, he tried to deceive him with scripture. So when you're reading self-help books, they're, they're gonna mix some scripture in there because you're a Christian and if they don't have, and when, some, you know, sometimes as Christians, we could be so naive that anybody saying Jesus Christ, we instantly think that they're down. Anybody quoting a Bible verse, you can see a celebrity that just finished rapping about murdering and killing yesterday. And then today they, they quote a Bible verse. You say, oh man, I think that you, you keep them in prayer because it, it looks like they're, they're changing. I, you know, it's like, yeah, I hope they are. But let's not be so gullible, right? The devil quotes scripture too. And one of the biggest deceptions that people fall for today is this idea that you can do both, Right. One of the most dangerous things about a rapper like a Nas or a Kendrick Lamar that will that will make one song about God or two, three songs about God on their album and the rest of their songs, DMX. Right. About their own debauchery, violence and stuff. It's like it's this idea that you can be a righteous gangster that but that, that somehow you're saved because you're a gangster, but you still have a heart for God and you always kind of throw God a couple tracks on your album. But, 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 but the rest of your album is about murder, violence, and killing. It's still, but, but you throw a couple, so it convinces people to think that they can somehow have this righteous gangster image where like they're a gangster, but God knows their heart is pure and they do seek God and they're struggling to change their ways, and, but they're still going to heaven because they've always kind of held on to God. No, 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 it doesn't, you cannot serve two masters. You either all in or all out. Jesus said he spits out the lukewarm. He does not want them. So that's a dangerous idea. To this, it's a prideful thing. You can be a righteous gangster. You can be a holy gangster. You can keep your thug and prideful image, but as long as you show that soft side that you do kind of seek God and you do have a sensitive side to God, you're still at the crossroads. You haven't made a decision yet. You're either going to come in or you're going to stay out. You can't do both. You can't do both. You're either going to be a follower of Jesus Christ or you're going to be a gangster. You can't, there's, no, there's no Christian gangster. There's no righteous gangster. You haven't made the leap yet. You haven't made the leap to the other side yet. But you have to, you have to pick which side you're going to be on. So that's a dangerous idea because it makes kids think that, that they could just keep religion in their back pocket. As long as they, they say a little five-minute prayer in the morning and read their Bible a couple times a week, they can do what they will uh, because they got rappers that do it. And these rappers are successful and they believe in God too. Right? And it's like, no, either you all in or all out. There is no middle ground. There is no gray areas. You're either serving the God of all creation or you're serving the God of this world. And you cannot serve them both. Right? Jesus, you have to be all in for Jesus Christ or you all out. You know, because the enemy knows that if you 50% with him, then God doesn't want that. You, you 100% with him. If you 5% with him, you 100% with him. You either 100% with Jesus or you're not. So that's the message that I want to bring today, guys. The power of positive thinking is Satanism. It's all about you manifesting your own reality, you doing your own will, you making your own money, you serving your own purpose. And you're not here for yourself. You're not here for your selfish ambitions. You are here to seek and do the will of God for your life, not to find your own individual purpose for yourself. You're not finding anything. You're going to be serving something. You just won't see it. And that something you serve will give you your purpose because your purpose will be what its purpose is for you. 
So you have to choose who your master is going to be. Is your master going to be Jesus Christ, who wants to have an open relationship with you and wants people to know? Or is your master going to be something that doesn't even want you to know it exists, that's going to lead you and guide you and put ideas into your mind to make you think that this is your purpose when, it has, when it's just its will and your own will for yourself and you're not actually serving the most true and living high God? who's the father of all creation, the father and God of our Lord Jesus Christ. So who do you want to serve? Something you can't see that doesn't want you to know it exists or the true and living God that loves you, that wants a relationship with you and has a plan for your life better than any plan that anybody could ever give you. That's what you have to consider. Make sure you guys hit the like button and drop a comment in the comment section, guys. All glory, honor, and praise to my father in heaven and to the Lord Jesus Christ. If anybody wants to donate, I'm going to put a donation page on the screen. If you want to support my ministry, through Cash App, Venmo, or PayPal. It's in the description box. It's in the comments, and I'm going to put it on the screen. Peace, guys. I appreciate you all for the support, and uh, God bless you all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ.